Former President George W. Bush made a gaffe by mixing up his war crimes. The media were quick to pillory him for his mistake, but the truth is there's nothing funny about war criminals. It's time to target pots calling kettles black. Former U.S. President George W. Bush recently made a gaffe during a speech in Texas. The 75-year-old Bush was denouncing the corruption of the Russian political system when he inadvertently condemned the unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. The decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> Iraq, too. Anyway. Media junkies dubbed it as history's greatest Freudian slip. The video of Bush's mental mix-up went viral, garnering over 10 million views overnight. Late-night TV talk show hosts mocked Bush for his seemingly casual admission of his own war crimes. A, a, a rock, too? <laughs> that is a refreshingly lighthearted confession to war crimes. I guess, I guess we should call off the search for the WMDs at this point. Somebody owes Saddam Hussein an edible arrangement. Very funny stuff. The core of Bush's miscue is that fact that his actions resulted in the needless deaths of over one million Iraqi civilians. Allow me to recap the scenario which led to that unjustified and brutal war. Following the Al-Qaeda attack in 2001, then-President George W. Bush declared a war on terror. The U.S. subsequently invaded Afghanistan, toppled the Taliban, occupied the country, but failed to apprehend Osama bin Laden, the 9-11 attack mastermind. The U.S. media machine built Saddam's Iraq into what they claimed to be a clear and present danger to global security. We were told by U.S. and British intelligence sources that Saddam possessed weapons of mass destruction. When U.N. Chief Nuclear Inspector Hans Blix failed to find any evidence, Bush and British Prime Minister Tony Blair decided to act on their own anyway. The American public were convinced by their politicians and the propaganda machine that Saddam's weapons of mass destruction posed a genuine threat to the USA. They were also told that the Iraqi people were tired of living under the iron fist rule of Saddam and that US soldiers would be greeted as liberators. The madness that gripped the American public was perhaps best illustrated by the anger directed at France for not supporting the US invasion. For a brief time, French fries were actually renamed Freedom Fries, and there was a boycott across America of French wines and cheeses. Canadians were also scorned by the Americans when then Prime Minister Jean Chrétien declined to join in the illegal invasion of a sovereign nation. In the end, the US, UK, and a token force from Spain invaded Iraq. In quick order, the military formations of Saddam's army were easily routed, and the Iraqi leader was forced into hiding. At no point did Saddam even threaten to use his weapons of mass destruction for the simple reason that they never existed. That's right, folks. Bush sent his troops to invade a country to eliminate a threat that did not exist. Despite having toppled Saddam's regime, the Iraqis did not greet U.S. soldiers as liberators. They treated them like hostile occupiers. For the Iraqis, the price was much higher as Bush's illegal invasion sparked waves of interfactional violence that continues to this day. While Putin's invasion of Ukraine deserves to be condemned as a war crime, for that condemnation to be coming from Bush only highlights the hypocrisy of U.S. foreign policy. Putin and Bush are both war criminals, and that is in no way a laughing matter. This has been On Target. I'm Scott Taylor.